the the basic idea is that things closer to us look bigger, things farther away look smaller. So if I'm drawing something um, going off in the distance, I might draw the horizon line and a vanishing point. And the road, a road is going to get be like a triangle that comes to a point at the vanishing point. Because this part that's closer to us is going to look bigger than this part that's farther away. The vanishing point is just where it's so far away, it looks so small, we don't see it anymore, it just disappears. Now, another concept that is really, really important to understand is the lines that we draw send signals to a viewer. So if I draw horizontal lines, or horizontal line segments, if you want to be really precise, horizontal line segments are going to make something look like it is laying flat. Okay, so a sidewalk is going to be made up of squares with these horizontal line segments. Um, if I draw vertical line segments, it's going to send a signal to the viewer that something is sticking straight up and down vertically, like a fence. You guys see the difference there? So the big idea is, like, both of these have two guidelines that go to the vanishing point, but horizontal line segments make it look like it's laying flat, and vertical line segments look, make it look like it's sticking up from the ground. If I'm drawing a building, no matter what shape that building is, um, I always start off with just the simple shape in this case, a, rec a rectangle. I ignore the vanishing points. I ignore anything else. I just draw that flat shape to start. Then I draw guidelines to guide my drawing so it gets gradually smaller from this corner, this corner, and this corner to the vanishing point. I'm going. Some people, it actually helps them to draw dots at the corners so that all they have to do is connect the dots. Now, if I were drawing a building that went on forever, that's what it would look like. Most buildings don't go on forever. Most buildings come to an end at some point. So to, to put an end to this building, one of the most common mistakes I see people make is they just draw like a line that goes across the back of it. Does that look right? What I want you to do is think about this logically. If there is a corner in the front of my building, wouldn't it make sense to have a corner in the back of my building? Does that make sense? And I'm going to erase the parts of the guidelines that go outside of that building. These three line segments that I'm going over right now, those are angled towards the vanishing point. I call those guidelines. They guide my drawing to get smaller as it goes off in the distance. These line segments that are horizontal and vertical, they are connecting lines. They connect two guidelines. So this vertical one, it has a parallel vertical line in the back. I have a horizontal connecting line in the front, so I'm going to have a horizontal connecting line in the back. So these line, the connecting lines should always be parallel. Does that make sense? Parallel meaning they're going the same direction. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the most common mistakes I see people make is they see like there's an angled line here, so they try to draw a house that is like matching that angle so that it looks like a 90 degree angle right here but that just makes it look like your house is falling over um, now if your cityscape happens to be the city that the three little pigs were living in and there's the big bad wolf blowing over the house then then you know how to do it but if you if you want a house that looks like it is standing up, 
that is not falling over, you need to make sure that you have, let me just start fresh here, since I've ripped a, pay, a hole in that. Um, if you want, if you want your house to look like it is standing up from the ground, you're going to need to make sure that the left and right side are vertical lines, vertical line segments. If you want that traditional pentagon-shaped house like um, we all have been drawing since we were like four years old, you start off with that traditional pentagon shape. You draw guidelines from this corner, this corner, and this corner to the vanishing point. Now, some people ask me, like, why don't I draw a guideline from this corner to the vanishing point? And the answer is, if a guideline would have to go through the original shape to get to the vanishing point, that means it's behind this wall. I wouldn't see it, so I don't bother drawing it. Does that make sense? Now, these top two guidelines, they are connected by an angled line segment here. So I'm going to have a parallel angled line segment in the back. And the bottom two guidelines, they are connected by a vertical line segment right here. So I'm going to draw a vertical line segment in the back. So this part that I'm emphasizing right now, that is my basic sort of pentagon house shape. Make sense? Windows and doors are basically a smaller version of the wall that they're sitting on. The top and bottom of this wall angle to the vanishing point. So the tops and bottoms of any windows on that wall will also angle to the vanishing point. What I do is I draw a line segment for the tops and bottoms of all the windows. So they're, they're like all the same height and all the same height on the wall. And then I just erase the little segment in between. That way my windows look a little bit more uniform. Now on the front of this building, where I, I just drew a pentagon shape, I wasn't drawing anything with the vanishing point, my windows and doors have nothing to do with the vanishing point. I just draw a rectangle for my door or for my window. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, no matter where it is on my paper, let's say I'm drawing a city in the year 5000 and we've got floating buildings. I always start with the shape for the front of it, guidelines from the corners to the vanishing point, and then parallel connecting lines. So this connecting line is horizontal. The connecting line in the back is going to be horizontal. This connecting line is vertical. The connecting line in the back is going to be vertical. Okay? Um, that would be how I draw it. The big idea is if you imagined you're standing in this space, standing in the middle of the street, because you are very careless and don't care about your safety at all, but if you're standing in the middle of this street, eye level with the vanishing point, when you look up, you're going to see the bottom of this building because it's over your head. And you're going to see this wall because it is closer to you. If you look to your right, you're going to see the front of this building. You're going to see the side of this building. You might see a little bit of the roof because apparently you are a giant and you can look down on that roof. Does that all make sense? The idea with one-point perspective is we keep a consistent illusion of space by using one viewpoint, one vanishing point. No matter where it is, I start with the simple shape for the front of it, guidelines towards the vanishing point, and then parallel connecting lines. Um, even if it is an irregular form, like if I had an organic-shaped building, I treat these curves as rounded corners, and then I think of it like parallel curves. The back wall is going to curve the same way.
But if I have a window on this curved wall, the left and right side of that window will curve the same way as the wall. Okay? Does that make sense? So I'm just going to draw a series of windows to make this look almost like a film strip or something. But I just want to emphasize how the sides of the windows are matching the sides of the wall. Okay? But on the front of it, I don't have to worry about the vanishing point at all. I just draw the simple shape, whatever it's going to be. Okay?